Number three, and I see this a lot in my work with addictions. My doctor dissertation was in the area of sexual addiction, and I've worked with sexually broken people as a counselor and a therapist for many, many years, is sexual addiction. Yes, many sex addicts can and will act out their sexual addiction and as adultery. It's another form of looking at porn in their mind. It's, it's an acting out, picking up an escort, going to a prostitute, compulsive masturbation. It's just another way of acting out their addiction. And in these cases, um, the addict really isn't bonding to the other person because addicts don't really bond to people. They bond to an object or a process, food, alcohol, drugs, gambling. All right. And so addicts don't emotionally connect to people. And so in this sense, a sex addict who is acting out their addiction in adultery is really just using people. Now we call it adultery because they're married, but really it's an expression of their sexual addiction. It doesn't take away the hurt of the victimized spouse. It doesn't take away the betrayal of the victimized spouse, but I've known many many sex addicts who acted out through adultery. And that's not to justify it. That is why addicts must go into a recovery program. 12 steps are still the best program for keeping people sober. The 12 steps that were origin originated out of AA are very, very fruitful for not just drug addictions like Narcotics Anonymous, but also sex addiction or gambling process disorders are what they're known as addict must get into recovery but an addict who acts out in adultery must get into recovery so they won't go back to committing adultery as an expression of their addiction but then they have to help deal and help heal the wounds of the victimized spouse the narcissist the one with the narcissistic tendencies may not want to deal with the victimized spouse probably mainly because their narcissism blocks them to having true and deep empathy for connecting to the pain they caused. Now, another one leads to it. And I've seen this because of my intensive work. I do three-day intensive with highly distressed marriages, many of them committing adultery. I just had two phone calls today to my office. People want to get in and repair their marriage in our intensives because of adultery. And then we do what's called a genogram. A genogram is a three-generation map where you actually kind of look at the grandparents, you look at the kids, from that, from the grandparents and all the you know aunts and uncles, and then you look at your own generation. And what you actually find out is you can actually see adultery generationally as well. And so another component uh, that leads to, or a trait that leads to adultery is sometimes there's a generational history of adultery. It's just what the generations do. As one person said to me a long, long time ago, and she said, you know, my husband's family just comes from where it's expected the men are going to cheat. Did you get that? It's expected that the men are going to cheat. That's a generational history. Now, you could argue that these guys are narcissists or you can argue they have an addiction. You know, I can't go back and talk to the people in the past, but we do know that it is in the generations, okay? There could be a family history of adultery and it gets kind of gets passed down, all right, to the children until one person says enough is enough. I'm not living this way and I'm going to change this generational pattern and curse. You know, that was my wife and I, we both grew up in broken homes. My father was a major sex addict. And um, I do believe looking back at it, he committed adultery. Didn't see it when I was young. It took me getting, getting to adult, my adult wife, looking back at him and seeing some things. And, but he was hypersexual. If you come from brokenness, if you come from a lot of hurt and pain, you see these patterns. Well, I knew in my early 20s and mid 20s that if I did not change who I was, and become a healthy, mature adult. I was going to pass on generational curses to my kids. And so my wife and I decided we were going to pass that on. So we, we worked hard to transform our lives so that we could become healthy and mature, have a really healthy, strong marriage, and raise healthy, mature adult kids. And, and so another trait that leads to adultery is there's a generational history of it. Next, another reason or a trait that leads to adultery is some people have a very high need for approval and acceptance, a very high need for approval and acceptance. And they really, they're emotionally dependent. They lack the ability to speak up for themselves. They lack the ability to take a stand for themselves. They lack the ability to say no, because if they say no, they may be rejected. They don't want to be rejected. And so they go ahead and give in to poor decisions because they're wanting to be loved. They're wanting to feel they have value. They're wanting to feel that they matter emotional dependency. It's like being an emotional child. They want to be loved. So they go pursue adultery. Why? So they can feel accepted or 
They may give in to adultery, someone wanting to have sex with them. Why? Because they don't want to say no, because, you know, this person cares about me. I don't really have, I, if I say no, they might be hurt or offended by me and I want to offend them. And so they give in and say yes. Emotional dependency is not healthy. To be too dependent is unhealthy. Too independent, the narcissistic side, is not healthy either. What is healthy is interdependence. Healthy, mature adults learn to live a life of interdependence. In other words, all humans are dependent and needy. That's, make, that's because we're human. But you have to be able to have a level of independence as well. You've got to be able to say who you are and who you are not. You've got to be able to speak up for yourself, all right? So you need to be able to stand on your own while at the same time be able to bond and connect, all right? That's healthy and mature. So emotionally dependent people. Next trait is these people commit adultery because they actually fear being emotionally intimate. In other words, I don't want to be intimate here, but if I have adultery, I can get my needs met and that doesn't require the same level of intimacy. It's different because I can go over here and do this and get my needs met, but then I can walk away as well because there are those people that cheat out of their own needs out of their own desires, but really they fear being vulnerable. They fear being intimate. And so when you have this fear of deep connection and, and intimacy, some people go cheat. Why? If I commit adultery with this person, I don't have, to, that's not a long-term commitment. This is about what we're doing, but there's no vulnerability to it. It's about me getting my needs met. They're using me for their needs. It's like mutual using, but really there's a fear of intimacy. Another reason or trait that leads to adultery. In this one I've seen, probably more often than not, the person commits adultery as a way to end the marriage. They actually commit adultery as a way to end the marriage because they're really afraid to say they want out. And they're not able to speak up for themselves because they don't want to look bad. So what do they do? They go commit adultery so she'll get mad and, or he'll get mad and, and leave. It basically creates a reason for adultery. Most of the time when this happens, where they're, sh they're shocked to find out that the offended, the victimized spouse wants to save the marriage. And they're shocked by that. Why would you want that? I cheated on it. We just need to end this thing. And so another one is because they're really looking to break up the relationship, but they're just afraid to verbalize it. And the last trait um, that leads to adultery is this person actually has a secret life. There's the one that you, the spouse, knows. And then there's this other person you don't know. You don't know this other person. It is a secret life. Different friends, different peer group, different way of being. Over here, I'm the good churchgoer. Over here, I get involved in swinging. I get involved in all kinds of other things. There's a secret life. And in these folks, they try and keep those two worlds separate from each other. They try and keep them very separate from each other. I just worked with a, a couple here not too long ago where he came clean about the secret life that he had. She was shocked. She had no idea. Now you think, well, what was wrong with her? Nothing. She had no reason to believe that he had a secret life because she trusted him. And she didn't see anything in her mind that would suggest there was something wrong. You know, psychopaths and sociopaths are really good at keeping this a secret of keeping the two worlds apart. I think long-term, you can't do it really well, but you can try it. You can do it for a while. These are the traits that lead to adultery based on some research. If you have some of these traits, don't assume that just because you have these traits, you're destined to commit adultery. No, you've got to want to go do it and you got to choose it, all right? But that's just some research that showed these kind of things tend towards people who commit adultery, all right?